Okay, I've got to tell you this because <laughs> I just recorded most of this episode without this mic on. Let's try this again, shall we? and welcome to the third episode in our three-part series looking at the history of Necromunda. In the first two episodes, we've seen the fall of an ancient interstellar empire at the hands of the Imperium, the destruction wrought on the planet by centuries of war and strife, the rise of the gangs and their high houses, and the Imperial's constant struggle with the rebellious peoples of Necromunda, as well as the rise of one Martrek Helmeyer and his kin, who rule the planet to this day. And in this third instalment, we will see how this House of Helmor cements its position at the head of Necromunda's political elite through constant manoeuvring, brutal justice, and a vice-like grip on the planet, as well as making our way through each millennia until we find ourselves in the age of the current 40k setting. Oh, and don't forget, this is just but one version of the truth, so make of it what you will as you build your own games. And uh, I think that's it, so let's roll the tape. M37. Now this millennia is defined actually by a deterioration in the House of Helmor, as many of its descendants fall into excesses, madness and decadence. This culminates in a fierce civil war by two siblings, Lady Cinderac of Hive Primus and Lord Gothral of Hive Needle. Left with no clarity in who should rule and without riling up the ire of the Imperium, they rage a war that spans over a century. Cinderac emerges victorious. However, this change in leadership stirs up another great house war. As Lady Helmor turns up the screws on the ties to flush out any weaknesses in the hives, she forces the houses to fight for their own survival. And through this struggle, a number of houses fall, yet new ones rise in the form of Hera, Vossak, and the ones that we know today, Goliath. All whilst this is happening in the hives, Rumours and stories start to emerge from the ash waste of orc warbands attacking nomadic settlements and travellers moving through the desert wasteland. And furthermore, whispers of similar brutal attacks occurring in the deepest and darkest parts of the Underhive. I mean, who wants to make an orc gang? Not much else happens in this millennia, but it culminates with some ridiculous imperial bureaucracy that is a complete and utter waste of time that I won't bother you with, apart from to say the Imperium is inept and it's ridiculous. <laughs> and that's about it. M38. This is definitely Cinderax millennia. She takes Necromunda by the horns and sets its sights on something the peoples of this planet haven't done for millennia look towards the stars and the galaxy beyond. She does this by developing a new geostationary star fortress known as the Eye of Selene, which forms a gateway for Necromunda as well as acting as a new level of defence for the planet. And to ensure this gateway's prominence and the strength of her house, her last dying act is to write into law that all trade must pass through this gateway, and any such who dare to ignore this mandate are to be felled instantly. This causes fields of downed vessels to crash into the surface of Necromunda, creating what is known today as Helmor's Graveyard. We also find the House of Orlok officially recognised as a clan house as it takes over from the previous one known as Orland, so another name that we know. Also, some cartography is done in this time by the Imperium, they love that sort of thing. But it actually reunites some once lost hives, as well as cements a new alliance between the nomadic chiefs. Oh wait, remember that Siberia character from the previous episode? The one that considered themselves the last true descendant of the Iron Lords. The one that Helmeyer had to defeat in order to gain rulership over Necromunda. Well, you know how they disappeared into the ash waste, never to be seen? Classic comic book villain. No body, not captured, disappears into the night. Yeah, they're gonna come back. And they do. But probably not in the way you suspect. They return as a clicking arachnoid-helmed withered ganger. I mean, that sounds so cool. Someone kitbash that, please. Hello. Hey, hello. Pete. And if you don't, I'm going to have to do it. Anyway, they try to raise an army in the hive city of Rothgol, looking to seek dominion over Necromunda once again. 
However, again, they don't succeed. But this time they are captured and they're offered as a trophy to Helmar. So unfortunately, no more cooler things coming back from them. But someone make it, please. M39. Now, for the past 5,000 years, the only real outside trouble for Necromunda has been keeping up with the Imperial Tithes. But now, that's all about to change. In a millennia where Necromunda has set its sights on the stars, the stars start to set their sights back on it. Firstly, some Drukhari turn up and steal some nobles, and then the Immortal Cult. Remember those people from last time? They try to psychically awaken an entire hive city known as Spoil, but due to an inquisitorial attack at exactly the same time, a psychic blast bursts out across the ash waste, killing everything in a hundred kilometers. On top of that, it is completely wiped from people's memory, so much so that when people see the city of Spoil on hive maps, they just believe it to be a cartographical mistake. They just don't know it exists. So weird. <laughs> and then something weird awakens in the decimated hive city of Skull. Remember the one that the orcs had got into after fighting up in space and then the Imperial Fist followed suit? Well, the Imperial Fists are called back again, but one, only one, survives. They are found lost, roaming in the ash waste. They're taken back to the Spear of Dawn and give their report to the Imperial Fists and then nothing is heard of. When f when Games Workshop don't tell you what's happened, you know it's bad. <laughs> then a storm opens up the earth and reveals some ancient technology, and before the Mechanicum can arrive, it's completely scavenged. I mean, it's Necromunda, what do you want? Uh, a saint arrives in the sky, which causes a heck of a load of scams against the houses, but also starts the rise of the famed religious zealots known as the Redemptionists. M40. And this time sees the influence of the previous millennia send Necromunda into another series of tumultuous affairs. Firstly, after a slight at a dinner party, Helmar infects House Herantus with a gene-crafted contagion that spreads like a plague amongst their hive city of Mortis. The city is sealed from the rest of the world and set to live out its fate, leaving everyone to die. Also, we see the rise of the Corpse Grinders, a religious cult dedicated to the blood god himself, Korn. Their cannibalistic members eat their way through the hive of Arcus, demanding that everyone either joins them or becomes the feast. Their destructive wave cannot even be quelled by the hive enforcers, and so the hive city is walled off by artificial ice storms from the rest of Necromunda. And that's pretty much it for that millennia. M41. Now we're at today! Hey! This will be the world that most of you will enter into in Necromunda. But to be honest, take advantage of everything I've talked about in this series because they're all mysteries, timelines and events that you can play within. So just have fun with it. I mean, it's all meaty stuff. Maybe I'm a bit hungry after talking about the corpse grinders. In this millennia, we also find House Delac rise to the top after many centuries of warring to the position of Keeper of Secrets, so definitely some very important players in the whole of Necromunda and ones to watch out for. Then a crazy scientist, a tech priest known as Hermatus who thinks, let's have a go at this, accidentally loses one of his experiments which releases a gene stealer infestation on the hive city of Primus. Oh my gosh, what an idiot. Within two years, gene stealer cults, these are the genetic tyranid infestations which are sent to sow seeds on planets before an actual tyranid invasion, rise up throughout Secundus, finding its way into all of the houses. The only option left, nuclear bombardment. However, this is not enough, and even though Hive Secundus is completely destroyed, the cults still remain. And so the only option left to them is to build a wall around the city. However, it only rises again in another bloody fight centuries later. In this age, the House of Escher tries to rejuvenate the virility of its male counterparts, but it, it all goes wrong, and the last patriarch causes a divide in the house which starts a civil war, and he escapes into the ash waste never to be seen again. I mean, that happens a lot, right? 
Oh, Aldarian squats. They turn up, they talk to Helmar, they tell him there's an impending doom of chaos that's gonna hit the galaxy. We're doomed. And then they leave. Cheers. And finally, Helmor banishes one of his sons to the deepest underhive because he resembles too greatly the ancient progenitor of the Helmea line, Martrek. I mean, that's just asking for Oedipian troubles, right? <laughs> and that's it. We did it! Yay! <laughs> So here we are, we find ourselves with Necromunda, the war-torn, broken, battered hellscape filled with demonic cults, religious zealots, alien threats, imperial overlords, ruthless gangs, and everything else in between this godforsaken 41st millennium that you can imagine. So don your greasiest leather jacket, put the heavy metal on, and build yourself the most ruthless gang there is, and vie for power, territory, and dominance, because what the else is there left to do in this godforsaken hellscape that is the 41st millennium i mean f anyway like subscribe click the bell and join me on the rest of my journey through this because it's gonna be a heck of fun and in the meantime you take care of yourself in the underhive bye everyone <laughs>